This tank right here is being removed from World of Tanks console, or at least removed from sale, and I guess today's video we're going to showcase what this vehicle is actually like and whether or not you should really be that worried that this thing is getting removed from sale. Of course, we're talking about the premium tech tree, and if you go into the filters, we filter by tier 10s, you can see there are many tier 10 vehicles are for sale right now and quite a few of them are getting removed except from of course the 279e but regardless the WZ111 Quillin is no longer going to be available for purchase and that means that from the following week you will not be able to purchase it so for the next week or at least eight days of the publishing and recording of this video this is available now if you want to purchase it, it's going to be at a 30% discount, I believe, off the top of my head from what Wargaming have said so far. So you'll be able to get this for 30% off after the update drops tomorrow. But if you aren't really that worried about whether or not you're going to purchase this tank or maybe you've already got it, uh, let's give you a full review of this vehicle so you guys understand uh, the implications of removing this and why it is probably kind of a good thing because this vehicle is innately very very strong at tier 10 and it is of course a premium one that you can only buy so the fact that this is even in the game is kind of a little bit annoying um, to have been in the game and it is just a blatant better version than the tier 10 tech tree counterpart so the WZ111 Quillin what does it have well it has 560 alpha damage it has 250 pen it has 340 heat pen, which is, to be honest with you, outstanding. Uh, 340 pen will go through literally everything and anything you come up against. Yeagerou superstructures when looking directly at you. Uh, E100 turrets are a paper, basically, against 340 heat. Um, you've got tons of different really heavily armored tanks that will just not be able to have any armor when you've got 340 pen. So it's basically um, a guaranteed pen, especially if you know the weak points of the vehicles. Uh, tier 10 heavy, mediums are just, yeah, they're going to get taken out so easily with this thing. And the good thing about it, I guess, if it is if we have a look at the detailed statistics of the vehicle, is that... This thing is not slow, 50 kilometers an hour. The dispersion of the vehicle isn't awful. You can see there with all of the boosts and stuff like that, it's 0.25 uh, accuracy, which is amazing. Trust me, really, really good. 2.26 second aim time. It is, of course, a reload of 9.17 seconds. I'm going to show you the equipment, meaning that the damage per minute of this vehicle is 3,662. And of course, with the good penetration, you can make use of that as well. Um, not only that, it gets a little bit of armor. We can see that in the background here. The turret is fairly strong, albeit the cupolas can get penned quite easily uh, by people obviously shooting them. Um, the hull armor is basically kind of trash, um, at least on that big lower plate and also on the side of the front if you're kind of angling like this then you'll get penned really easily because they can go through the inner drive wheel and through the main hull of the tank um, and of course on the other side etc and of course they can go through the upper plate as well if you angle like this uh, fairly reliably although probably a little bit stronger than something like a t10 since the angle isn't as um, kind of accentuated uh, comparatively so Overall, this vehicle is really, really strong statistically, but let's jump into some live gameplay. This could go one of two ways. It could be fantastic. It could be absolutely terrible. So I'll join you in the gameplay and we'll talk a little bit more about the gameplay style that you have to use when deciding to play this vehicle. Now then, the first map that we get is Dragon Ridge, and this is a, I guess, okay map for this vehicle. There are some things that you can definitely hope to get. Uh, typically, you want like a more of a town map with this vehicle where you can kind of push around corners, you can deal damage, you can be opportunistic, etc. Um, whereas Dragon Ridge is obviously predominantly focused around having gun depression and being able to use turret armor. We do like turret armor, but not on uh, kind of 
unlevel surfaces which you'll be seeing with this now you have to be very careful of crossing on this area especially if you're slow heavy because you'll get hit by people camping on the opposite side of the hill um, one thing i always like to do on this map at the very beginning is push pretty aggressively now you don't always have to do it um, but if you can get down into this position it is usually pretty decent um, because what you can do here is just spot everyone uh, who might be kind of pushing up you have to be a little bit careful of artillery pieces you can spot the people in the bush directly in front where I'm aiming here since they can then get taken out as well really really nicely and you can get some spotting damage if your team don't have good view range and typically if it's heavy tanks sat behind you they don't have good view range to be able to uh, kind of get some damage one thing that you do have to be worrying about is people just blatantly yoloing you trust me it's not worth it for them um, but they definitely do yolo from time to time um, one thing that you can do uh, from this position is of course use this little ridge to uh, to get your gun elevation or gun depression by kind of sloping yourself up the hill to be able to get it uh, without exposing too much of your hull armor uh, obviously be wary of the artillery pieces this will provide enough cover for you to kind of get away with it um, so there's nothing to to worry about there uh, the only thing that is of course a little bit daunting is the IS-7 that's in this position um, what we can do and I think I'm going to do that now since I'm not really helping all too much at this point here is you can push down uh, and go around to their side now the one thing about doing that is that if there is people in the central area which I believe there will be in this game uh, it's probably not a good idea now what we'll do is maybe it's time to actually kind of push over um, or at least push towards the opponents. We've got an M60 there. We've got the IS-7 who needs to be dealt with. He is the one that's kind of stopping us from just going at this point. Uh, the M60 is for some reason just going. Not entirely sure what he's after, um, but yeah, he's been punished for it. We're getting some assistance damage, which is what we're wanting in this game. Um, and as we've said before, it's obviously a nice addition to just your damage. Obviously not done any damage so far. Now then, there is of course people pushing from behind so we need to be even more careful and at this point it's really imperative that we kind of start moving forward to get into this sort of location as long as it's safe. Now we don't want to do it for the sake of YOLOing or anything like that. We just need to start moving forward uh, so we can kind of get on with our day and hopefully uh, be able to then remain safe from people who are pushing through the middle, which, trust me, they will be pushing through the middle. Um, so we've managed to do that. We're actually in an area where now I'm feeling a little bit more confident uh, that we're not just going to get taken out really easily. We put a lovely shell into the tusk there, obviously high rolling by a ton uh, to be able to hit him uh, and hopefully we'll be able to get the final shell into him and we miss unfortunately so from this position we've got people down below us and this is not good um, at all in fact it's one of the worst things that you can but luckily we've been able to push forward and get into this sort of position but now it's kind of time to support this light tank who's on our team I'm going to uh, kind of push up with him and hopefully we'll be able to do something from over here. Now the E100 is of course still here. We'll load the heat round to make sure that every single round that goes towards him does pen, hopefully, at least fingers crossed, we may be able to help with this uh, KPZ. We take him out of the game. The tortoise is of course around the corner and we don't want to just be sat in front of him because that could be very, very painful. Um, but with the heat pen that we do have, it doesn't really matter about the front of the tortoise as we'll uh, most likely be able to deal with him. You will see here, like I was talking about, the heat pen against the E100, hopefully, um, whereby you really don't need to kind of worry about uh, hitting him. We hit the mantlet there, which is not what we wanted. We'll just slowly pull back, kind of bait him into hopefully shooting uh, the area of our tank that has the best armor. And then we can kind of push in here. Now we do hit him. <laughs> we luckily hit his gun, uh, which is unfortunate for him. Double time, he's, we've destroyed his gun. So yeah, he's not having fun there. Um, but yeah, we're having a little bit of trouble with obviously the E100 heat, um, or at least the turret armor of him. It's kind of difficult to pinpoint the accuracy on this. Obviously lower plate is where we want to go. If possible, we'll try and get up close and personal so we can stick the gun into him, uh, which is lovely. And now it's time where we can go into the turret. There you go. Saw the turret and we managed to deal damage. 
T92 is over here. Hopefully this is not like overloading you with loads of information, but this is what goes through my head when I am playing the game and deciding upon what I want to do. And that's ultimately uh, hopefully going to help you guys maybe with making your own decisions. Now we've got the tortoise who's out in the open. We'll go for the engine deck because that will yield the highest chance of us either damaging the engine, locking him in place, and then also being able to um, get a fire potentially as well. Now there's a Waffle Panzer IV. He's probably in the same platoon as the tortoise potentially. Um, we can actually have a look. Um, and unfortunately he's not by the looks of things. We're not entirely sure where this Waffle Panzer IV is. He's most likely down in the dip area here, but because we've got uh, HE rounds on this thing, it might be worth loading them. I would assume he's down over here somewhere. Not entirely sure once again, um, but yeah, maybe we'll be able to hit him or something. I'm not sure. Um, he may have in fact been up in the top area anyway and I've just gone completely the wrong way I wasn't sure but we'll kind of just have to wait and see as to whether or not we can find this Waffle Panzer 4 uh, usually uh, these people are camping up here or they'll be down here somewhere um, or potentially he's gone all of the way towards the cap circle um, and we probably won't get back there even with the mobility of this vehicle so a really decent game I guess Nearly 7,000 combined damage, um, which is really, really nice, uh, especially in this sort of thing. So if you were going for your third mark of excellence, this would probably be a game that would get you up on your marks of excellence. Obviously, we haven't got any marks, I don't think, on this thing. So um, we haven't really got to worry about that at all. So, yeah, it's not really a problem. Um, I just genuinely haven't played this tank, I don't think, enough. Um, but, yeah, I don't know where this Waffle Panzer 4 is, but... He may be just hiding around um, and I don't actually know if anyone's gone around here so <laughs> I don't know um, maybe or maybe not he could be down here as well uh, so we'll only have to kind of take an indication as to where he may be but I'll join you back in a second once this guy has been found I don't want to ramble on for a ton of time when I'm just rambling around the map. So the Waffle did get actually spotted and it was next to the T92, but don't worry, the T92 finished him off. And of course, that is a victory. Don't know where we'll place in this, um, but yep, yeah, we managed to come top with 1,406 base experience. It's not the most outstanding game, but it was made a hell of a lot better with the assistance that we could get from this game so really really nice one almost 7,000 combined and yeah really nice one so we'll jump into another gameplay see how that goes and I'll join you in a second now then we're not getting particularly lucky with getting the maps that suit this vehicle the most um, but I'm sure we'll be able to make it work still uh, and we'll give it a go anyway if it's an absolutely useless game I don't know you might find it funny uh, but yeah we'll give it a go um Hailbron, well not Hailbron, Westfield sorry, is a map where you can go up into this area. Typically in my heavy tank I will go up to the hill area. It's usually where you know the other heavy tanks go and you can kind of brawl it out. Um, one negative of it is that it's hilly and when you've got like some, I believe this tank has 6 degrees of gun depression, um, it's not particularly the easiest fight that you can have and when you're so long some of the bobbles at the back of the tank can make it really annoying uh, for you to really get effective gun depression as well so yeah it's uh, a little bit painful so you've got to be wary of uh, the spots in which you can get hit from and knowing exactly when you should and shouldn't push with this vehicle uh, compared to something like that you might be able to get away with something if you've got a little bit more gun depression where you know you're only cresting over and, and only your turret is shown you've got to be sure that with this tank um, there's no one not going to be anyone there now a 121 on the enemy team is of course not yet buffed it will be getting buffed tomorrow so by the time you watch this potentially uh, that tank will all have been buffed i believe um in the game at least from memory um but yeah we'll see how it goes um hopefully this game is not just a complete route from the enemy team um and hopefully they don't just route us as well so we'll wait and see one easy early damage shot that you can get if you're playing in medium tanks is to crest that area right there where you just saw me. Uh, we're not going to poke into an FE215B183. That would be a terrible idea. So we're not going to do that. 
but what we can do is crest into an object 268 please don't yolo me he obviously fired as well which is lovely which means we can sit here and we can get another shell of damage off into him because we saw his round and we actually managed to shut him down which is good as well um, one thing that you can do from this position is of course shoot at people like this uh, one to one that are maybe over cresting now I don't quite know what this guy's doing he appears to be a little bit uh, too aggressive within this game um, you're seeing here that there is a T95 chieftain uh, that kind of counters this position uh, we finish off that guy that was just rolling around in the uh, central area got to be careful of over down here and of course the artillery pieces on the enemy team uh, as we talk about them of course he hits us and ammo rucks us even though we didn't pen but you know it's one of those things where the game is pretty much won already um which is kind of disappointing i hate it when the game uh, lasts this long even though you know you can win and you can have decent games and stuff like that it's just not that fun is it uh, to kind of be sat here doing that uh, but you're seeing now the enemy artillery went for someone else which is nice for a change um, and then we put a lovely round into the progetto he only damages our gun which is lovely because now i won't be able to hit anything and we can go down and hopefully track uh, the 2705A which of course we don't manage to do because when you do try and actually play smart and get some assistance damage the RNG goes against you but from this point just going after the 215B and of course picking up 3100 damage in probably the fastest tier 10 game I've had in a long time what like four minutes this game considering like we spent probably a good minute just getting up the hill for them to only spend like three minutes of the game actually dealing damage. Yeah, it was, a, it was an interesting one, but I guess considering the length of time that that battle went on, what, three minutes and 46 seconds? That has got to be one of the fastest I've played in a long time. Um, but yeah, we'll jump into another one because that was so short. Right then, so the third map, hopefully a little bit longer than the previous and one that we can do a little bit more in, uh, it's uh, of course Pearl River and this is a map that is probably one of my favourites in the game, um, purely because it has a little bit of everything. If you play in a light tank, a medium, a heavy, a artillery, a tank destroyer, whatever you're playing in, you at least have something that you can do, um, which is something I always like. It's always the best kind of maps is that you don't get you know shafted by the fact that you've got a map like Himmelsdorf when you're playing in an artillery or something like a light tank you know there's nothing worse than being limited by the map itself uh, you're seeing here that there is a chisel who's kind of sat in this position we may pre-aim him um, there is of course something else back there because we saw two trees coming down uh, the e4 there is now pushing up as well so we've got to be careful artillery of course being the great player and great class that it is does go straight for us we put a lovely round into the Carnarvon there the e4 we don't want to be getting hit by him although he may be firing he I'm not entirely sure but yes um we put a round into him uh, what we don't want to do is take a hit from the E4. Again, we definitely don't want to be doing that, so let's not crash into the building next to me. Um, E4 decides he looks like he's just coming. I don't really know why. Um, but yeah, he's now looking in the wrong direction, so maybe we'll be able to get a shell, which we do, uh, which is nice. And now it's just time to go back down the hill, avoid the artillery shell potentially, and then uh, maybe deal with the E4 here as we then crest the ridge so we see where his outline is he is of course looking in the, our direction now so we're going to back down this hill and just avoid the shell altogether now hopefully some the artillery piece although now he's missed uh, will have gone for this e4 and we don't know quite whether this guy is going to be able to get a shell into us so we put one into his capola he's now going to rush us so let's just continually back up and we can put ourselves up in a weird ass position um, that's going to be hard for him to be able to reliably hit us just at least straight away and now it's time to start retreating because there is a spot that the enemy tanks can get up into which is there um, which you've got to be very careful of and of course this Carnarvon has also got into one of these spots there's also the enemy tanks pushing down so it's looking pretty bad for us at least from this position so we're hoping now 
that the tank destroyers on our team are going to be able to help us out and of course just trying to uh, reconnect with some of the team members uh, so we can hopefully at least come out with a semi good result within this game so it might be a case of me trying to help out this tank destroyer the Carnarvon on the enemy team is deciding that he's um, gonna go so we'll use the kind of momentum aspect of uh, movement on this and try and help this fe215 b183 out the barask on the enemy team is now in this position so like we said that is a risk um and it, we're gonna definitely end up being um taken out in this game uh, where we definitely need to help out our death star so if we can help him out take a few hits that will be ideal um obviously we don't want to take any hits um because <laughs> no one wants to take hits if they don't need to we can go for the mouse's lower plate he's now going to come around the corner hopefully the death star's pre-aiming at this point uh, but he goes for the carnarvon instead which is a little bit disappointing leopard one is now around the corner he's going to keep coming around um and penning us so that's a little bit unfortunate hopefully the mouse misses he doesn't um but at least we provided some support so not a great game in terms of how we did but we played it from a perspective of you know trying just to help the team out and unfortunately we just didn't have any the hopefully the team that are pushing towards the cap circle i don't know get in it at least that, that might be the only time you ever hear me um saying that people should get in the cap circle but maybe it's the only chance of winning this game um but we'll have to wait and see but even then with the agila on the enemy team he may be able to get back to the cap so um yeah we'll see how it goes hopefully they'll just get in the cap and win it by that but we'll have to wait and see <laughs> the T1, T57 heavies just getting shafted by the Yeageru. Um and yeah overall it's looking like a loss regardless so yeah that's not particularly the greatest game um, but it showcases the tank you know we can make a, the best of a bad situation not every game is perfect not every game you're going to be able to deal with 7000 actual damage not every game you're going to be able to get 7000 combined um but yeah a holistic view you saw there three games 3000 damage in every single one it was actually probably one of the best uh, variety of games because you got the first one which was like a good game you got the second one which was just where one of the team just completely decimates the other and then this one where your team is kind of the decimating team uh, or the one that just gets shafted but you can still make it work with this vehicle and it's super super powerful dpm makes this tank so good and the 560 alpha that you get with this vehicle makes it even better and that is why this vehicle is one of my favorite tier 10s in the game because even when put under pressure this vehicle can be fantastic and you've hopefully seen that within the last three no spectacular gameplays um, but yeah hopefully you did enjoy this video and there will be more coming on all of the premiums that are getting removed by wargaming so you best understand them uh, for a future time if you ever want to decide to either buy them or if you're like hang on a minute i never see this tank and i have no idea what it is and i want to take it out hopefully that's given you enough to go on um and there you go a decent result for the final battle nothing too spectacular 4000 combined um but there you go hopefully once again you did enjoy it and don't forget to check back on some of the other stuff coming this week tomorrow because there will be a full update video for you to have a look at other than that hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and a fantastic rest of your week and i'll see you there Goodbye.